first time in the history of this YouTube channel, we have a brand new James Cameron film. Yes! So today we're gonna stop and rank all nine James Cameron films from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your ranking of all nine James Cameron films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. Now this is a little bit of a tricky one because two of James Cameron's films haven't been released on Blu-ray yet and one of them, The Abyss, isn't available to stream anywhere in the United States. Why? With that said, I have one quick announcement before we get started. Next month, I will be at Fan Expo New Orleans. Also over the next few months, I'm planning on being at Fan Expo Portland, Cleveland, as well as Megacon in Orlando. At Fan Expo New Orleans, I will be leading two different panels. One of them will be a live recording of a ranking for my main YouTube channel. The second panel will be my How to Grow a Nerdy YouTube channel panel, and I will be doing a meet and greet while I am there as well. With that said, let's get started. Without question, in last place is Piranha 2 The Spawning. Now, when it comes to real James Cameron films, this is not a real James Cameron film, but he is the credited director for this film, so it is included in this list. Now, the original Piranha was one of the better Jaws ripoffs. It was directed by Joe Dante, and then a producer wanted to squeeze a little bit more money out of it, decided to do a sequel to it. <laughs> Are you serious? But because of some behind the scenes shenanigans, the producer wanted to direct it himself, but wasn't allowed to. So he hired James Cameron to direct it. James Cameron directed it for five days before the producer fired him, took over the movie. And apparently in post-production, James Cameron would like sneak into the editing room to try and edit the movie to be more the way that he wanted it to be. So how is the movie itself? Well, I mean, it's as schlocky and bad as you would expect a sequel to a Jaws ripoff made by a shady producer. Um, it's a very wacky plot about flying piranhas. Um, it edit cuts between day and night scenes like there's no consistency and continuity. There's a lot of shots that are actually out of focus, but there are moments that are kind of good. There's a stunt that apparently was one of the ones that James Cameron shot that's pretty cool involving a helicopter, but this is a bad, schlocky, early 80s cash grab monster movie that just happens to have James Cameron's name slapped on it, though he didn't really make this film. Number eight, Avatar, the highest grossing movie of all time. And to be perfectly clear, there's a gigantic gap between Piranha 2 and Avatar. Of the real James Cameron films, which all the rest of the movies on this list are real James Cameron films, I think he has a perfect track record of making good to excellent films. And I would say that Avatar is a very good film, in particular because it provided such a unique cinematic experience that just had truly mesmerizing visuals, like nothing we'd ever seen before. It is the standard by which all 3D is measured. Along the way, James Cameron is just a master craftsman with movies. He knows how to draw out big emotions, how to get you angry, how to make you feel sorrowful, and then have a victorious conclusion by the time you get to the end of his films. And Avatar absolutely does that. Of course, as unique of a cinematic experience as Avatar was, the story itself is one that we had seen many times before. Me, baby, one more time. And that was what's so strange about this movie is that it was so cutting edge and groundbreaking visually with the immersiveness of the experience, but on a story level, it stuck so closely to this template that we've seen many times before of the broken former soldier who's sent into the primitive tribe, who falls in love with the primitive culture and eventually has to lead them to battle the more technologically advanced colonizing 
military force. We've seen it before, and I don't know why James Cameron stuck so close to the formula, but it doesn't detract from the fact that he still knows how to deliver. It might stick to the formula, but he plays the formula right. So this is still a very good movie and an awesome cinematic experience. Next up, Avatar The Way of Water. And because the original Avatar was my least favorite of the real James Cameron films. It was always frustrating to me that James Cameron decided to do four back-to-back -back Avatar movies since that's the world of his that I would least like him, like him to return to. With all of that said, James Cameron knows how to deliver a big cinematic experience and... We had to wait 13 years to get another one of these experiences, but once again, it was just a mesmerizing time at the movies where just you just had these phenomenal shots of underwater where you can't tell where the CGI ends and real life begins or the other way around. It just seamlessly creates this world and pulls you into it like you're watching a nature documentary about this planet that doesn't exist and we're just going out and exploring it. The thing that edges out the second one over the original is that it doesn't stick to such a formulaic story. It's still very straightforward. It's a revenge plot. It's a survival plot line, but it's not beat by beat several other movies that we've seen many times before. It still has the big emotions, still has a big slam bang emotional finale, and it kind of pulled you into the family a little bit more, so you have more of kind of an investment in what's going on with it. So I think it just edges out the original Avatar just a little bit. Number six, The Abyss. As I said in my intro, this movie hasn't been released on Blu-ray yet, and it's not available to stream anywhere in order to rewatch it for this video i had to order a french dvd off of amazon now i'm pretty sure in my garage i have a vhs copy of it somewhere but i don't currently have a working vcr so the french dvd was my best option and the fact that it's difficult to watch is a pretty big shame because it's another rock solid James Cameron film. If you're one of my younger viewers and haven't seen it, it's like a combination of underwater disaster movie, paranoia thriller with aliens thrown into the mix. It's trying to communicate. It's bad. And all of his craftsmanship is on display here. There's just all these incredible, like just tense underwater sequences where you're trying to like hold your breath. It has all sorts of big ideas. As always, his movies are cast really well with Ed Harris in the lead here. Now, I will say this. Of all the James Cameron films, it's probably the one that doesn't quite pull together as tightly as the others. He had a few too many big ideas that he was trying to do. The special edition for the movie runs 30 minutes longer and makes it really clear what he was trying to do with his messaging and tying in the aliens with some of the other stuff going on. And when you pluck that out for the theatrical cut, the aliens feel a little bit superfluous for kind of what's going on. It would work without them in the movie. All that said, this is still a very good to great movie. He delivers a tense, tense underwater situation. This is the first time I probably watched it in like 10 years or so. My wife claims she's never watched it, so maybe first time I watched it in 15 years. Absolutely just as good as I remembered it. Number five, True Lies, the other James Cameron film which hasn't been released on Blu-ray, which is crazy. Crazy because this was a big, gigantic hit Arnold Schwarzenegger film from the early 90s and you can't get it on Blu-ray. But at least with this one, it is available frequently on the streaming services. And this is probably the most purely fun James Cameron film. It's a mix of big blockbuster spy action thriller with like unconventional rom-com. And you put the two together, it's just non-stop entertainment. As an action movie, it is just memorable action set piece after memorable action set piece that are just crafted to perfection. Every single one of them stands out just the best that 90s action had to deliver. And then as a comedy, 
It's the funniest James Cameron film. It's some of the funniest stuff that Arnold Schwarzenegger has ever done. Are we gonna die? Yep. I'd say it's working. Have you ever killed anyone? Yeah, but they were all bad. It's the best Tom Arnold has ever been. And then on that romantic level, when we rewatched it, my wife goes, yeah, whenever I'm recommending rom-coms, I need to remember to tell people to watch this movie because this is actually like a rom-com. What holds this one back? Just a couple of things. First one, when you watch it in HD, it's really, really, really obvious when you're seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger's stunt double throughout the entire movie. And as soon as you notice it, you can't stop noticing it. Second one, it definitely drags a little bit during the wife subplot in the middle of the movie. And while it's still funny, it's always entertaining. It's like, okay, it's like, let's get back to shooting the terrorists. This is just one of the best action movies of the 90s and really of all time. I know what this is. This is an espresso machine. No, no, no. It's a snow cone maker. That's what it is. Number four, Titanic, the previous highest grossing film of all time. And what James Cameron has done so well is creating these movies that just suck you into a time and place. Here in Titanic, he just takes you back in time and immerses you in the world of the voyage of the Titanic where for the first hour and a half of the film, you're just swept up in the optimism, the excitement that everyone has for this ship. So you cognitively know how horribly this is all going to go, but you're feeling the excitement of the moment of being on this tremendous ship. So that when it hits the iceberg and the crash begins, only slowly realizing just how bad things are. From this moment, no matter what we do, Titanic will founder. But this ship can't sink. She's made of iron, sir. I assure you, she can. And she will. And we have knowledge they don't have. And it creates just such a sense of dread in your stomach that lingers there for the entire back half of the film. And then James Cameron is so good at delivering big, massive spectacle while still holding the right tone. And James Cameron uses all the tools a film director has to bring to life the events of the Titanic in a way that made people experience it in a way that they couldn't have otherwise. And that word experience is one that keeps coming up in this particular ranking because I think that's what James Cameron's gift has been the last 25 years of being able to create these movies that just feel different experientially for an audience. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to share your ranking down below in the comment section. Also, I've done a bunch of these rankings in the past of director's filmographies. I've done David Fincher, Quentin Tarantino, M. Night Shyamalan, James Wan, and so many more. You can check that out right up here when this video is over with. Also, remember, next month I will be in New Orleans doing a live recording of a ranking for my main channel. And then over the next few months, I'm hoping to be in Portland. Cleveland and Orlando. In third place, The Terminator, a brilliant combination of sci-fi, action, and horror. It has the big set pieces of an action movie. It borrows the template and structure of a slasher film. And at its core, it's a sci-fi concept about time travel and cyborgs. And the mind of James Cameron just brilliantly crafts a very simple, straightforward narrative that's clever all along the way. It's engaging. It lays the foundation for a world that you want to know more and more about. It has twists and turns all the way up until the final scene. I'll be back. In a lot of ways, this is the most impressive film that James Cameron has ever made because he did it before he was 30 years old with a very small budget considering the scope and size of the action in the film. And it's essentially, it's his debut as a writer and as a director. And over 40 years later, it still holds 
up. It's better than all of these 21st century sequels with budgets 10, 20 times the budget of this film. This one just worked and it was entirely from the mind of James Cameron and his director behind the camera, staging action, being able to cast the right people for the right roles and just delivering tense situations, memorable action sequences, characters that you care about, and all of it was right there in his first real movie that he delivered. I love the Terminator franchise. I wish that they would get back to the lower budget, smaller scale of the original Terminator film and stop trying to copy T2. Aliens, there's two types of people in the world, people that prefer aliens to alien and people who are wrong. Aliens takes everything that I love about the movie Alien, and I love the movie Alien, and takes it to the next level. At its core, you have Ripley, who's no longer just trying to survive for herself, but now she's a survivor, making choices to try and serve other people. In particular, when we get to the colony, she has this very maternal side that takes over, and she's trying to save Newt. And it just adds all these extra layers to her character where she's very feminine, but she's also a person of action. Get away from her, you bitch. But the other big change is that James Cameron ups the ante, ups the action, ups the stakes by sending in a group of colonial Marines with her on a rescue mission to try and save the colonists. But despite having way more firepower, there's also a whole lot more threats out there. But it's not just the aliens that are a threat. He also has all these other things go wrong where the colony is about to explode and they're not able to escape. And so there's all these different conflicts added on top of one another that just creates this sense of tension that does not let up until the credits roll. And because he makes it a much more maternal, personal story for Newt, the betrayal of Burke seems such like such more of a stab in the back as he's trying to harm a little girl. So I made a decision and it was wrong. It was a bad call, Ripley. It was a bad call. Bad call. Right. Ripley's choices are more emotional because it's not just for her own survival, it's for the survival of someone else. And thus every victory means so much more because it's a heroic victory. Uh, it's just a phenomenal film. I wish it could be number one on this list. It is in my top five favorite movies of all time, but there's another movie on this list that's also in my top five favorite movies of all time. But coming in at number one is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. This is my favorite movie of all time, so it was safely locked in the number one spot on this ranking. And much like he did with Aliens, he takes everything that worked about the original Terminator and just ups the ante, where he cranks up the emotional level with the human interactions, cranks up the scope, the size, and just delivers the greatest action movie of all time while still having an emotional core at its center. It's a movie that takes the original film and kind of turns it on its head where at the beginning of this film, Sarah Connor has turned into kind of a crazy person who is a Terminator herself out to kill Miles Dyson in this film. And then it takes the Terminator and it makes him the guardian of John Connor. And by the end of the film, He's learned the value of human life. I know now why you cry, but it's something I can never do. But also throughout the course of the film, John Connor is able to pull Sarah Connor out of her crazed delusional state and help her regain her humanity. So while it is this movie jam-packed with some of the best action sequences of all time, it's also a movie that always stays very in touch with basic human emotions. And as outlandish as the idea of a boy finding a father figure in a cyborg is, there's something very relatable in the idea of a boy without a father finding a father figure. Hasta la vista, baby. It has everything that I go to the movies for. So for me, 
This is the perfect blockbuster, and as a person that loves blockbusters, loves big, gigantic action movies, it comes in at not only number one on this list, but any list that it would be on because it is my favorite movie of all time. If you enjoyed this video, remember I've got more director rankings just like it right over there. Also, if you're in Louisiana, I will be in New Orleans next month as well as in Portland, Cleveland, and Orlando over the next few months, or at least that's the plan. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.